wanted to um, provide a little history. Um, CHNB started recognizing students at science fairs about four years ago. At our our first run experiment was with the, the Edison. Uh, Thomas Alva Edison Kiwanis Science and Engineering Fair. <laughs> that involved students in Lee and Charlotte and some other counties. And so Katie was the first student to be recognized and what a shining star. Um, and she has then since uh, come to two of our Charlotte Harbor Watershed Summits, which are every three years opportunities to learn about research that's happening and presented her research project as first a freshman in high school, I think. Right? Uh, actually, eighth grade. Yeah. Eighth grade. So, just, she said it. She's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm very excited to share with you all. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't do that. Um, a little bit about my experience as a science fair student, as a science fair uh, research. So, I'm not sure. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Like I said, my name is Katie North. I'm from Estero, Florida, in Lee County, and I participated in the science fair for nine years. I don't know that sounds like a very long time to do anything, um, but I participated every year from the time I was in second grade to the time I was a junior in high school. So I'm a very seasoned uh, science fair participant. Um, I went to Fort Myers High School, graduated as a member of the class of 2015, and now I'm a student at the University of Florida studying environmental engineering. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll all kind of see how I got to this point. Um, so like I said, I want to talk to you today about uh, various uh, experiences that I've had through the science fair and how they've helped uh, propel me in my education. And so the first thing I want to talk about is motivation, specifically uh, the summer research opportunity at Florida Gulf Coast University. Uh, the summer research opportunity, I first off want to say I cannot say enough about. So uh, if you have any questions for me about this camp afterwards, I'd be more than happy to share uh, my experiences with uh, essentially what this is is a two-week science camp for middle school students. And as a sixth grade student going in, science wasn't really my thing, I guess you could say. Um, but essentially what they do is they take these students and they put them into small groups and they do very advanced research projects, especially considering that uh, they're 11, 12, 13 years old. Uh, this poster that you see right here is actually one of the posters that I did when I was in seventh grade. Uh, the title was The Effects of Boardwalks on Populations of Tillandia Species and Cypress Stones. So for a 12-year-old, when you're studying Tillandia populations, that's kind of a lot. But it was so great because the professors and the mentors uh, that were a part of this camp, they had high expectations, and they pushed us to uh, achieve more than we thought we were capable of, which is one of the greatest things about, uh, about this camp, and the greatest thing that I carried on uh, through my uh, science fair experience, I guess you could say. Uh, furthermore, uh, all the students at this camp, they're so excited. They're just so passionate about science. And that's what the, uh, one of the greatest things, another great thing about this camp is. I, I'm just really excited about what this camp has to offer. Um, and when you're a student and you're surrounded by other students who are passionate about anything, but especially passionate about science, it's just contagious. And so. Uh, this camp was such a great experience for me. I participated as a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade student. Every year I was eligible. Um, so I actually went back uh, as a freshman, sophomore, and junior. Um, wasn't able to do it when I was a senior. And <coughs> volunteered with the students uh, for the next uh, three summers. And that was an incredible experience on its own. I got to learn new uh, lessons along with the kids and teach the lessons that I learned uh, to them. So uh, being, a, being a mentor in, in the field of science in order to encourage other young people to do what I've done and more, it's just uh, so rewarding. I, even after these camps are done, I would just be handing out my email address and my phone number saying, call me, please, call me, I just want to help, I just want to... Um, get you as excited about this as I am. And so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is taking initiative. Because it's one thing to be motivated and passionate about a subject, but it's very different to actually take that motivation and produce it into a project. And that is what I did when I was an eighth grade student. Um, I did a project titled The Impact of Aeration on Dissolved Oxygen and Algae Biomass in Southwest Florida Ponds. And that's a mouthful, but especially for a 13-year-old, um, to be doing this research. That is what this camp allowed me to do. It allowed me to push myself. 
and raise my expectations for myself to uh, actually solve this problem. Algae growth was a problem in my community. I live on a golf course. Um, and obviously when you're a lay manager on a golf course, you don't want algae in your ponds because it doesn't work for us. Um, and so it gave me the confidence to go out and solve this problem. I was rewarded for my hard work. I worked uh, very hard during the summer, which for a middle school student is unheard of to be doing a science project in the summer. Um, and I was actually able to be at the uh, state, Florida State Science Fair that year, which was a great experience, very similar to the summer research opportunity because I was surrounded by other students who were so excited and passionate about science like I was. So um, it was a great experience for me. Uh, which leads me to my next idea, which is experience. Uh, we uh, talked a little bit about when I was in eighth grade. I went to present my uh, project at the uh, CHNEP uh, Watershed Summit, which was is a great experience for any student to have at any age. But like I said, when you're a 13 year old student and you're presenting your research to um, multiple professional professors from a large reaching area, that is just uh, very unique, and I'm so thankful that I had that opportunity. Um, I also had the opportunity to uh, publish my abstract um, in the Harbor Happenings, um, which, uh, like I said, for any student, this is a great opportunity, but when I achieved this at uh, such a young age, it really propelled me to move forward. I was so excited about what I was doing, and all this positive reinforcement was just building up inside of me. And uh, as a high school student, science fair is optional, but I said, you know what? I got to do it again. So I did. Um, and my project when I was a freshman was titled The Impact of Copper Sulfate on phyto Phytoplankton and Water Quality in Southwest Florida Ponds. Um, so some of you may know that copper sulfate is an outer side and it is used very often on golf courses because it is very effective at killing algae, which, like I said, golf courses really don't like algae in their ponds. Um, and so I did this study and I was able to. Uh, you see me at a computer in a dark room. Uh, that was me analyzing uh, phytoplankton at a lab at FDCU. Um, and I had a really great time doing this project. I love doing all these projects. You get to be outside in the environment and these setting science. It's awesome. Um, and I had a really great time, but unfortunately, I did not get to go to state science for that year. Uh, I actually uh, achieved third place in my category, which was good, but it was nowhere near the amount of success that I'd had the year so this failure, I guess, uh, really, uh, there's a follow-up, there's a follow-up, there's a follow-up. That's why, that's why I use that word, that's why I use that word. Um, um, really made me question if I was actually good at science, if this was something I was meant to do. Um, and that leads me to my next idea, which is perseverance. I said, you know what, I had a really good experience when I was in eighth grade. I know I'm doing something right, so I did it again. Um, and this, that led me to uh, this project entitled Using Brassica Junkea and Uruca Sativa to Fiber Remediate Copper from Water Using Hydroponics. Another mouthful, but uh, what all that means is that uh, fiber remediation is a method of using plants to absorb a contaminant uh, from water or soil, in this case water, as you can see in the by homemade hydroponic system out of McDonald's Sunday Cups. I'm sorry, cheap. Um, and uh, it was very successful. These plants were uh, arugula and Indian mustard were able to absorb over 90% of the copper that was in the reservoir. So it was very successful. Um, and my uh, success with my project was rewarded because I was able to compete in the International Science and Engineering Fair. And this was in 2013 when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, let me see some of these pictures. I have some visuals, I guess you would say. Um, this is actually my uh, my name tag. You can see on the screen right there. All of these pins come from uh, pin exchange that I attended from students from around the world. This was easily the most life-changing experience I've ever had. I know that sounds like a lot to say about a science fair, but if you don't understand, it's because you haven't been there. It is the most incredible. This is, took place in Phoenix, Arizona. Thousands of students from all around the world 
come here to participate in the largest academic competition in the world. And it's sponsored by Intel, so you know it's a big deal. Um, on this keychain alone, I have uh, pins from someone from Japan, from Brazil, Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> the EPA was there, and they gave me a pin. Uh, Israel. It's, I can, I'll pass this around because it is definitely something to see, something to look at. There's a koala bear on there that someone from Australia gave me. So it was really such an incredible experience. And, um, oh, I have another slide as well. Uh, those are uh, some of the students that came with me from my region. Um, the Thomas Alva Edison Kiwanis region. Um, and it was so great because at this I was able to really talk to other students who were interested in what I was doing in very different fields as well. I spoke to students from Italy who made a rocket and actually launched it at their school. I don't know how they did that. <laughs> and I don't know how they got it past airport security. But they did, and they had it there, and it was amazing to talk to them because they were so excited about what they were doing. And I know I'm peeking out here, but it's okay. Because it was so much fun. There was a student from Romania who made a smart board for the cost of $5. And for those of you who know what a smart board is, it is essentially a board like this that you can write on and erase, but it's computerized. They are very expensive, and he made one for $5, and he let me try it. And so this was a very cool experience, so motivational for me to see students my age and younger than me who are changing the world. And um, I can't say enough about the International Science Fair. So this is another thing. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., I would love to talk to you more about this. This is great to me. And so that leads me to my next subject, which is momentum. When you go to the International Science Fair, you come back with a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence. And so um, that's what I did this next year. I did a project entitled Using Brassica Jarkea to Phyto Mine Copper from Low Grade Ores and Tink Related Agents. That's another mouthful, but uh, essentially what phyto mining is, is, use, is taking phyto remediation one step further. Uh, phyto mining is when a plant, in this case, Indian mustard, absorbs a metal, in this case copper, and then the metal that that plant absorbed is taken out of the plant um, and actually uh, reverted back to its original form. So it goes from being copper and polluted in the environment to copper solid, a metal that we can recycle and reuse in any variety of uh, applications. You can actually see it in some of these pictures. Um, upper corner right there, you can see the copper that is uh, formed after a displacement reaction. Um, oh, that's actually a better picture right there in the lower left-hand corner of the copper forming. Um, this was an extremely successful experiment, and actually it was the first risk that I actually took in the science room, because starting this project, I wasn't sure if this was going to work. When you think about it, phyto-mining sounds like an insane proposition. I'm going to take <laughs> copper that is in soil, and I'm going to turn it into a metal. Um, so uh, going into this, I was very nervous, and when I actually did see the copper in um, in those beakers, it was a it was the biggest, probably the greatest success that I've ever had. My science teacher, this is my science class in high school. Uh, my science teacher went back, saw it, and like came back running into the classroom saying, "Eureka!" So it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a it was a big deal, and so I was really excited about this. This was by far the greatest project that I had ever done, um, so I was very excited about it. Um, unfortunately, I did not get to go back to the International Science Fair, and that is a little upsetting after you go through a week of life-changing experience, like I said. Um, but at this point, I had competed in nine science fairs, so I had so many experiences, as you have seen, and my excitement and my passion for what I had accomplished, what I had achieved, was greater than my disappointment for not going to the International Science Fair. Um, there's a picture, I did go to the State Science Fair, which was a great experience again. Um, this is a picture that I took at the end of the award ceremony with two of my friends um, from our Thomas Alva Edison team. Um, and I did win uh, fourth in chemistry and an award 
Department of American Chemical Society. So it was a successful, it was a successful science fair, and uh, it was a successful project. Um, I didn't do a science fair when I, uh, I was in a uh, senior in high school because uh, I was very stressed out with multiple other activities in high school. I didn't have time for science fair, unfortunately. Um, but I wanted to finish with gratitude because you don't go through nine science fairs um, and so much time and effort spent in scientific research without uh, people to thank. Um, and so going all the way back to SRO, the <coughs> students there who are there to motivate you and help you feel like at home with science research, making you feel like it's cool. Uh, professors at Florida Gulfers University who are such great mentors and supportive throughout um, my entire experience. Uh, science teachers that I've had over the years who are so excited for what I've accomplished. Science fair, science fair students. Community members like uh, those of you at Charlotte Harbor at events like this. Um, and especially my family uh, who, of course, they couldn't be here today, but always believed that I could achieve things that I didn't think I could. Um, and so I'm coming back to the present, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to. Um, now I'm a student at the University of Florida, in, uh, majoring in environmental engineering, um, something that a subject that I'm very passionate about and very excited to pursue. Um, at UF, I'm a member of the Florida Water Environment Association, Society of Environmental Engineers, Society of Women Engineers, and also the Freshman Leadership Council. Um, back to my uh, use of the word failure earlier. Um, in the Freshman Leadership Council is a group uh, comprised of 50 select freshmen out of a pool of over 600 applicants. And they only asked you about five questions in your interview. And one of the questions they asked me was, tell me about a time you failed. And so I told them about the time that I went from winning the best of fair in science fair to not winning the best of fair in science fair. And really questioning uh, if I could be a uh, a, good, a good researcher, and how they can come back from that failure and going to the international science fair. And so in this, in this context, my greatest failure, I guess, turned into my greatest success. Um, and when I had my uh, interview critique, they told me that's what set me apart, was that I was able to take a failure and turn it into something great. Um, and I think that um, it's something to be said for all of us anytime we, uh, we fail or uh, don't achieve something we think we can, we can uh, persevere. And so I'm going to looking to the future. Uh, my goal is to uh, uh, graduate from the University of Florida with a bachelor's in engineering and a master's because they have a five-year program for that, which I hope uh, works out for me. Um, I also want to get an MBA in, in the future, hopefully work for the Environmental Protection Agency or look into a career in alternative energy. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to talk to me about science fair, environment, really anything, that's my email address and I'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. If you had any doubt as to whether or not it was worthwhile helping at science fairs, I think that uh, you now have proof that it is worthwhile. Yes. So um, clearly, you chose the right school to go to. <laughs> for that. I do have a question, though. Um, and you talked about how easy it is to be motivated um, to love and learn more about science when you're surrounded by people. That, are also, that also love and want to learn about science. How do you motivate people, or how do you think we can now motivate people to understand the value of science, who may not necessarily understand the value of science, but still like to learn. You know, In your environment right now, you're around people who are there to learn, but may not, may, maybe science isn't their thing. How do we communicate that message, the importance of science? Right, I think that's a great question, and I can really speak to that. You know, when I was in sixth grade, I wasn't really into science. Like you said, I love to learn. I love school. I was kind of a dork, but I didn't really care. Um, and I didn't really see what the whole point of science was. Like, I could memorize vocab words. I could read my textbooks, yada, yada, yada. But I didn't really understand why it mattered until I started doing research, until I started going out in the field and applying those things that I learned to uh, the research that I was doing. And so I think when you uh, really trust students to uh, achieve, high, achieve 
high goals and uh, do research like that, I think that can really uh, motivate them. Because once you see the things you can achieve, um, you just know what's up. And so that's my, that's, that's been my yeah. Uh, what advice would you have for science fair judges for a middle school level? For science fair judges for the middle school level, smile because they're scared. <laughs> um, uh, and ask them questions that uh, are honestly on your mind because they are told over and over again that they know the most about their project, which they do. Um, and so you never want to doubt that they know something. Um, just because you don't think they do, so ask them any, any questions you have. Uh, because I know I would be in my chair waiting for a judge to come and say, oh, I hope, I know this is an advanced question, but I know the answer and I hope they ask me. So, um, smile, ask questions, and encourage them. Definitely encourage them to keep going forward. We be here for a few more minutes through the break? Yeah. Great, so if you guys have questions for Katie, we can go ahead and spread that time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.